So we're gearing up for the Democratic presidential 2020 debate, right? Big deal, big deal. And we're going to see, like I think, more of the same that we have seen in previous ones. I don't think that this is something that we should necessarily clamor for. I think there's some other things to look forward to in the not-too-distant future. So let's just project ahead of time a little bit into the future. And uh, let's look at some possible scenarios that we could see unfolding uh, when and if Trump takes his next term. All right, Because I think that it's going to be very difficult for Trump not to win the next election unless we go to war with iran and that causes i don't know maybe we postpone the elections or something who knows okay but just given what we're looking at i think that one of the things we could potentially see in 2020 or, or beyond during trump's next term is going to be economic turmoil okay but i think we're definitely talking about turmoil in the sense that uh we could see inflation we can see prices go up we can see uh, virtually anything within the context of the dollar not looking so good that can take a downturn for sure i mean all the economic indicators are already there the things that were present in 2008 and other economic downturns uh they're virtually all present now economists are, are warning of what they call the greater depression okay so signs are there in terms of economic downturn or a, a collapse in, in the sense of the word okay that is a potentiality that we should be looking out for and the preppers have been doing that for a long time okay they've been stockpiling they've been training they've been uh they've been doing stuff within the context of that that's sort of going to secure insulate them a little bit if uh SHTF, okay, in that sense. And another thing we, we want to look out for is the SHTF scenario, okay, because even though economic collapse is definitely uh, potentially on the agenda, another thing that we're looking at is civil conflict, okay, civil unrest, whether we're talking about the blacks versus whites, um, straights versus gays, left versus right. The, the deck is stacked quite nicely in the sense for civil unrest, a type of civil unrest scenario happening, some SHTF where something happens, and then all of a sudden the folks are at each other's throats. Because it's getting very hard to say that there's not the potential for some type of civil conflict within that sense. And I think that's something that we should also keep, a, keep an ear out for, economic collapse scenario and SHTF, whether we're talking about you know civil, un, civil unrest, civil war type scenario, or maybe maybe the precursors to that right the the kindling being thrown um before the before the match that sets everything aflame and another thing which is the obvious one which maybe should have been at the top of the list okay is war war with who i don't know uh north korea iran russia because now russia supposedly just had this show of force right with one of their one of their warships and apparently they've been having this united nations peacekeeping drill i think 10,000 soldiers strong for more than a month or something like that uh, war is definitely on the agenda, and the question is, well, is this going to happen with Iran uh, during Trump's next presidency, during his next term, or could it happen potentially before? You know, people are touting, every time there's an election about to come up, people always tout the idea that elections could be postponed, okay? Uh, but who knows, if there's conflict with Iran, uh, who knows the, uh, the potentialities? We're living in clown world, this is, this is anything goes, okay? We're living in the age of anything goes. Uh, but I would definitely be on the lookout uh, for for war within that sense. Pick pick your nation, okay? Uh, all it would take is some type of false incident, false precedent, like a EMP attack or something like that. Blame it on some nation, and then all the, all of a sudden you've got exactly the context you need for for whatever the type of engagement the U.S. might be looking for, okay? And war in the sense of sure physical conflict and munitions and things like that but also we see what's happening with the chinese trade war and that could be tied into you know the sort of economic collapse scenario but really this is what we're talking about is a slow motion train wreck where most people don't recognize we're in sort of the economic straits right now that it's not necessarily a good situation and things are poised to increase again um appliances food cars things that everyday american citizens are using and buying are poised to go up by leaps and bounds and they already have i mean corporations and businesses companies are already raising the prices of their goods and this stuff doesn't tend to go back down you know once you pop the fun don't stop so once this stuff uh has reached a certain level this stuff 
rarely does anything ever go back to the way it was. When they write these, for example, the, the, the terrorist attacks and things that happen after catalyzing events like 9-11, do we get our rights and freedoms back? Aren't certain parts of the Constitution, Bill of Rights and things still suspended? You know, that's sad. And that's another one of the things that we're going to have to look out for besides the economic collapse, besides a potential war scenario, besides p potential civil unrest, okay, and uh, things poised to, to increase. We're going to see... Uh, an increase of catalyzing incidents like we saw with New Zealand, the Notre Dame fire, uh, the shootings that have happened, and evidence suggests that there's nefarious underpinnings to these things, that they're not wholly organic and 100% kosher, that there's elements that the, the enemy has had their hand in it, okay? And, you know, no good crisis goes to waste. I've talked about this before. They're able to take advantage of these catalyzing incidents because during these incidents the, the public doesn't know what to do they're in this mentally malleable state where they're more easy more able to easily be taken advantage of and that's what we see and i we've already seen that increase for the last two years and it's just going to increase ever more they're getting more and more bold they're getting more and more blunt and brazen the the evidence that there's something nefarious going on it's almost highlighted in every one of these incidents. It's almost hard not to see it because that's how brazen they're getting. They, you know, they just don't care because not that many folks are paying attention, so they're able to get away with that stuff. So I think that that's some of the major things that we're poised to see in the years coming up. And it may sound like more of the same, but the severity is increasing the impacts to us, how, how much we end up taking on the chops, that's what's really changed. I think that's what we got to look out for because ultimately uh, it's going to keep on increasing. This is, this is the new world future here. It's just going to keep on increasing until we look around and we realize that we've been in this, all this Huxley, George Orwell nightmare all along. It's just been one slow totalitarian tiptoe and we're well on our way if you ask me.